The college football AP poll for week seven came out a little while ago, and I figure most of y'all have already seen this because you're not seeing this video until Monday. But I just wanted to go over some of the, the top teams and the, the changes that were. I predicted, as I'm sure it did a lot of other people, that there was going to be a pretty good shakeup at the top, and there was. Um, but nothing on it that really just kind of kind of wowed me or, or shocked me. So I guess if I had to say, you know, you know, what would be one thing that surprised me most about the AP poll this week, uh, Vanderbilt did not get on it. Um, uh, you know, I'm only going to talk about the top 12, but, you know, even down around, you know, between 20 and 25, it wouldn't have surprised me if they would have broken into it. But for whatever reason, the voters didn't, didn't think so, but um, uh, kind of like we did last week, I'll, I'll go in reverse order. I'll start with 12 and, and kind of go through and not really a rapid fire, but just, you know, you talk about the team a little bit and what they did and where they were. So coming in at number 12 is Notre Dame. They move up three spots um, with their win over Louisville. You got to think that Notre Dame, every, every game they play, every week they have is almost like a elimination game from the playoffs, you know, with the fact that they're not in a conference, so they don't have that potential, you know, conference champion, you know, chip automatic bid that, you know, they're just going to have to get in on the good graces of the committee. So you got to think that, that, you know, any, any loss they have from here on out is going to, is going to keep them out, but they broke into the top 12, getting raised up a little bit. So they're, they're at least on, on the right track with a win over a, a pretty good Louisville team. Um, number 11, Iowa State moves up five spots. Um, one of the, the biggest movers, one, one of the biggest movers of the, of the week is Iowa State coming in at 11 with their win over Baylor. Iowa State, you know, they're in a conference that's, I'm not going to say that conference is a mess, but that conference is definitely trying to figure itself out as far as, you know, who the, the best teams in that conference are. So, again, kind of like Notre Dame, you know, any any loss in any given week could derail, you know, Iowa State. So, but with a good with a good win against Baylor, they moved up to number 11. Clemson moved up five spots to number 10. Clemson was four and one, or is four and one, uh, with their win over Louisville. Now, you know, no, with their win over Florida State, uh, Notre Dame beat Louisville. So Clemson, yeah, four and one moves up five spots with their win over Florida State. I, you know, I guess you know, I, I see, I, I, I understand this. You know, Florida State's down. Uh, Clemson was favored to win this game. You know, maybe it just impressed the committee that, you know, Clemson actually won a game they were supposed to. Now I'm not saying the only reason Clemson moved up five spots is because some of the higher-ranked teams in front of them lost. However, that, that could have had a little something to do with it. But you know, Clemson hasn't looked bad. I would say at this point in the season, for the ACC anyway, Clemson and Miami look like the two best teams in the ACC. Uh, I would not be surprised if we get to the end of the season and, and the ACC gets two teams into the playoffs, basically the two teams that – that play in their conference championship game. So, but right now, anyway, uh, Clemson and Miami looking like the best teams in the ACC. Uh, number nine, Ole Miss. Ole Miss uh, now five and one with their win over South Carolina moves up three spots. Um, so, it, you know, trying to improve, you know, Ole Miss fell from six to 12 um, after last week with the loss to Kentucky, but they get a win on the road uh, against South Carolina in Columbia, so it moves them back up three spots to number nine, back inside the top ten. Uh, you know, Jackson Dart, good quarterback, really good, really good passer. Uh, Ole Miss was able to to really kind of stay on schedule offensively against South Carolina, and South Carolina really couldn't couldn't get a whole lot done. So, you know, with that win. It definitely is is helping them get back on track. On on top of the fact of it being also a conference win, um, number eight Tennessee Tennessee falls four spots 
after the loss to Arkansas. You know, that game has been talked to death. It's going to com- continue to be talked about a lot, but it is what it is. I mean, whether, you know, whether you say it was bad coaching, bad, bad play calling, bad quarterback play, you know, offensive line couldn't protect very much, um, just running, the, you know, getting back to the, the play calling thing, just running the same plays over and over again, you know, they lost a game and it cost them. Um, but, you know, th- in this top part of the of the uh, the rankings here is really kind of where we see the most the most change. But, yeah, at number eight, Tennessee, now four and one, drops four spots after that loss to Arkansas. Uh, number seven, Alabama. Alabama was the probably the biggest mover in all of the, the top 25 uh, this week. Alabama fell six spots. Uh, from obviously from number one to number seven with their loss to Vanderbilt. Now they're four and one again, you know, was, you know, was Alabama's head really in that game, you know, as Alabama, you know, did they spend the entire off season and the summer uh, getting ready for the season or were they just getting ready for Georgia? You know, we'll see, you know, Alabama's got South Carolina this coming week and then they go to Knoxville to play Tennessee in, in two weeks. So, but really, with Alabama and Tennessee, we'll see we'll see where their heads at because Tennessee's got Florida in Knoxville this weekend again, a, a game that they're going to be favored in. You know, and, and a lot of people said that you know the Florida game might be a trap game, but I, I said it wasn't. But then again, I also said Arkansas would have definitely not been a trap game. But here we are. So yeah, Alabama falls six spots to number seven uh, with a four and one record after their loss to Vanderbilt. Number six, Miami. Miami moved up two spots. Miami is six and zero with their win over Cal. Um, I, you know, the last two weeks, there are people out there saying that you know the ACC officiating is some of the worst in the country. And the the little video I did on officiating last week and the changes I, I think need to be made was kind of inspired by the the Miami Virginia Tech game, but. Either way, you know, Miami found a way to win. At one point there towards the end of the game, they were down like 20 or 24 points, and they scored the points, came back. You know, there was the questionable targeting call. Was it targeting? Was it not? The ref said it wasn't, and really that would, that that call affected the end of the game. Whether it was a good call or, or the right call, um, you know, most of y'all saw that play, I'm sure. Uh, Cal had the ball. Miami defender comes in. Uh, gets him, kind of stuns him pretty good. They review it for targeting, decide that it wasn't targeting. Uh, Miami ends up getting the ball. They go down and score. Miami beats Cal in L.A. So still undefeated at 6-0 and and moving up two spots with that win over over Cal at number six. Georgia comes in at number five. Georgia was the only team that didn't move. They were number five before, uh, or in the week, you know, in last week headed in. Um, Georgia's four and one with their win over Auburn. You know, it, it was a, a good win they needed at the time, you know, with a long standing rivalry as the, the Auburn game is. Yeah, they didn't blow them out. I, I don't guess they needed to. I really, to be honest with you, even if Georgia would have won that game, 50 to nothing, I, chances are they probably would have stayed right there where they're at, at at number five. Maybe they would have improved to number four, but, but probably not. You know, the, the voters haven't forgotten the Alabama loss, and they're not likely to for a while. So Georgia stays at number five uh, at four and one with their win over Auburn. Uh, number four, Penn State. Penn State had their Penn State is five and zero. They moved up three spots with their win over UCLA. At Penn State, another one of those situations where, you know, in the Big Twelve, the Big Twelve is, or the Big Ten rather, the Big Ten is is kind of. I'm not going to say they're trying to figure itself out, but you know, it's it's this it's kind of the same song and dance every year. With the big with the Big Ten, uh, you've got Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan. Now, Michigan, yeah, Michigan is is so completely one sided offensively that you know they have been easy to beat. They're going to be to continue to be easy to beat if you've got a defense that can capitalize on that. But still, halfway through the season, you know that 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 
league could go could go either way. But a good look for Penn State beating UCLA. They move up three spots to number four. Uh, Oregon moved up three spots to number three. They are now now five and zero oh with their win over Michigan State. Um, again, a conference game for them in the Big Ten, and that game was Friday night. Oregon came out with the win, but Oregon would Oregon would definitely be a team that I would say won, but didn't really look that great. Um, there, the Oregon quarterback probably had one of the worst games he's played. I believe he threw two interceptions in that game, which made two, made interceptions two and three on the the year. He only had one going into the game, but they found a way to win. They're five and zero, beating Michigan State. And Michigan State looked like they just really couldn't get anything going anywhere. Uh, so a good win, televised at home in Eugene. Oregon wins that game against Michigan State. They move up three spots to number three. Number two, Ohio State. Ohio State moves up one spot into the number two spot with their win over Iowa. And Ohio State, obviously, is 5-0. and Now, I don't want to take anything away from Ohio State's win or how good they are because, obviously, it was a, it was a good win. Ohio State is a really good team. But does Ohio State move up one if – Alabama doesn't lose to Vanderbilt. You know, did, did Alabama in the one spot losing basically cause everybody else to shift around? I think that might be the, the case because, um, as we'll see, obviously, you know, Texas is 5-0 and number, and they're number one and moved up one spot coming off of a bye week. So you've got to say that, that Texas is – is probably the right now is probably the luckiest team in the in the country getting ranked number one off of a bye week, um, and and everybody else having won their game, m- moving up. So you know Texas moved up, Ohio State, Oregon, and Penn State all move up with wins. Georgia stayed where they were with a win, and Miami moved up with a win. So yeah, you you've got to consider how much effect. The Alabama and Tennessee losses had on this, um, with the, with the losses they had. But yeah, that's your top twelve. If we had the playoffs today, it would look something like that. Um, entertaining, entertaining. I, I think that the closer we get to the end of the year, obviously the the more things are going to kind of start, you know, shelling themselves out. Things are really going to kind of come into into focus and obviously you know it, across all the conferences you're going to start having more conference games i think for the most part the whole non everybody's non-conference schedule is over so we'll see how it goes with primarily conference games moving forward but but that's it that's your top 12 from the ap poll moving into week seven uh we'll be back just throughout the week uh, we'll do a couple of previews on a couple of games and anything else newsworthy that that might come out uh, next Saturday morning, we'll do what we're kind of getting into a rhythm now, <laughs> now that we're halfway through the season. But next Saturday morning, we'll kind of have the rundown uh, video of the games. And then, of course, a, a recap, you know, next Sunday and then the, the new rankings when they come out again. Obviously, when the committee starts meeting and the committee uh, rankings start coming out, uh, that's that'll be what I'll go by. And probably still just, just the top 12 instead of the AP. I'm, you know, pretty much everybody – you know, really kind of just starts paying attention to that other than the other, than the other polls. But, but yeah, here we are uh, going into week seven, a pretty good list of, of top 12 uh, teams. Like I said, we'll look and see what the schedules are, what the rest of the games are and do some previews and hey, we'll have a blast. I'm sure next week, or I'm I'm sure next weekend is going to be great. You know, like I said, I know we got the Tennessee, Florida game coming and the Alabama, South Carolina game and uh, Texas, and Oklahoma, the the Red River rivalry game will be next weekend. So a lot of really good football, even you know just in the SEC. You know, not to mention some of the some of the other games that'll happen in the other conferences. So stay tuned to those. Well, like I said, we'll do some previews. And thanks for watching the videos. See you next time.